Winner number 10, Gal Gadot. Imagine if celebrities singing from their mansions could fix this widespread panic. That's probably what Gal Gadot's first thought was the day that she decided to have a bunch of celebrities sing Imagine by John Lennon into their cell phones. Hey, you'll join us and the world will be as one. Oh god, that little smirk that she does at the end just says it all, doesn't it? Look how pleased she is with herself. On the plus side, instead of bringing the world together for one big kumbaya song, they instead united us in hatred. It was the only thing on the internet that people as a collective agreed was about as unnecessary as a DVD rewinder. That's a really dated joke. As a result of her trying to comfort her fans, Gal ended up feeling the full brunt of the Twitterati who threw a Gal Gadot is over party upon watching the tone deaf video. In number 9, Demi Lovato. Back in mid-April, Demi Lovato came under fire for allegedly having a fake Instagram account that she was using to bring down Selena Gomez. The tweet showed screenshots as well as Demi going live on her fake account, which apparently proved that it was indeed her. The canceller wrote on Twitter saying, Demi Lovato's finsta being exposed to reveal her obsession with bringing down Selena proves how disgusting she is. Hashtag Demi Lovato is over party. This account continued to plead her case for canceling Demi by adding more conspiracies to Demi Lovato's stands, making fake accounts to mess with the details. Specifically, there was one that claimed they personally edited the Demi post, but that's a weird angle to take because if you're a fan, why would you implicate her into this whole mess? Although Selena aside, Demi has publicly bashed other female artists, which just adds to the idea that she is, well, a fake feminist. In number 8, RuPaul. Fans of RuPaul's Drag Race were appalled after its namesake became a controversy that suggested that he was more behind the times than they initially believed. The show was created to be a forefront to celebrate the LGBTQ community, but RuPaul's comments put all of that progress into reverse. During an interview with The Guardian writer Decca Aikenhead was questioning RuPaul about the contradiction between his playful sensibility and the militant stance that he has on the transgender movement. The writer noted that RuPaul seemed to pick his next words very carefully, but still said that he probably wouldn't have admitted a transgender woman like Peppermint if she had already started her gender affirming surgery. He went on to say, you can identify as a woman and say you're transitioning, but it changes once you start changing your body. It takes on a different thing. It changes the whole concept of what we're doing. In at number 7, Tory Lanez. Canadian rapper Tory Lanez, whose real name is Daystar Peterson, recently gained mass popularity throughout this pandemic by constantly doing Instagram live sessions. His show was called Quarantine Radio and featured a ton of content that broke the community guidelines of Instagram. That being said, he was still crowned the quarantine king by his followers. With clout around his name now, we saw Tory hanging around with the likes of Kylie Jenner and Megan Thee Stallion. Which brings us to what Tori is being exposed for and cancelled for right now. Megan was in the car with a friend, Tori, and a member of his security team driving through an LA neighborhood. Apparently an argument took place in the car that resulted in Megan deciding that she was going to just get out and walk to where she was staying. I guess it was just really close to where she was and she didn't want to be in that car anymore. However, before she could do so, Tori allegedly shot her in the foot. Well, not allegedly, she got shot in both feet and there's proof of that. Since y'all h so worry about it, yes, this Tory shot me. You shot me. Either way, Meg calling Tory out led to many of his fans turning on him and thus another celebrity was cancelled. In number 6, Terry Crews. First and foremost, let's begin with the tweet that Twitter decided was the breaking point for Terry Crews in his career. Towards the end of June, Terry tweeted, If you are a child of God, you are my brother and sister. I have family of every race, creed, and ideology. We must ensure Black Lives Matter doesn't morph into Black Lives Better. Many advocates for BLM were furious with Terry for even tweeting this because it felt reminiscent of the All Lives Matter counter movement, which was viewed as a way of delegitimizing the Black Lives Matter movement across the United States. Francesca Ramsey even commented on his post and said, Terry, what in the actual hell? This is the very definition of a straw man argument. Why would you suggest that a movement created to advocate for the prosecution of cops and citizens responsible for racially motivated killings could somehow morph into we're better? The point that she's making is that demanding black equality is not the same as black supremacy, as suggested by Terry's tweet. In at number 5, Doja Cat. At the start of the pandemic, Doja Cat was upset that she had to stay in her home and therefore she was spouting off about how weak the virus was. I mean, weird flex, but okay. I believe she said it could be fixed with a little Mucinex, tea, and a cat nap. Huh? <laughs> Comment if you got that. However, what really started the Doja Cat is over party was allegations that she had participated in a racist chat room. First, let's check out the original tweet that wanted her cancelled. This Twitter user said why Doja Cat is being cancelled. She was an active member in racist chat rooms and was known for being anti-black. She made a song mocking police brutality. There was also a clip that someone had recorded of Doja right smack dab in the middle of an alt-right video chat. The bizarre thing with this one is that despite her claims that she was never part of this chat group, there was an interview that she did in 2019 with Paper Magazine where she clearly clearly stated that she was obsessed with a chat room that she couldn't name. That was the chat room. In number 4, Kanye West. 
Kanye West is one of the few celebrities that are so rich and famous that he's almost immune to being cancelled. Back when he released his album titled Jesus is King, Kanye was quote unquote cancelled by music critics because the album received praise from Trump. Once Kanye started to run for the 2020 presidency though, that's where the real cancel culture started to come out. People were accusing him of trying to sabotage the election and even further condemned him when he became emotional at his rally. I mean, he was talking about an extremely sensitive topic and one that was close to his heart, but his ramblings made many worried that he may actually get elected. In another failed attempt to cancel Kanye, he ignored his critics and spoke about how it was racist for people to assume that he was swaying black Americans from voting for Joe Biden. In number 3, Chris D'Elia. D'Elia was cancelled and had been accused of grooming and attempting to solicit nude photographs from underage girls. A woman named Simone tweeted out a screenshot of her alleged interactions with Chris, which began a thread of other women sharing their interactions with him as well. The stories were all pretty horrific considering that they were allegedly all underage at the time that Chris had sent the messages to them. However, in response to having his name dragged through the mud online, Chris told TMZ, I know I have said and done things that might have offended people during my career, but I have never knowingly pursued any underage women at any point. Chris then goes on to say, all of my relationships Relationships have been both legal and consensual, and I have never met or exchanged any appropriate photos with the people who have tweeted about me. Either way, you cancelled. In number two, Cardi B. Similar to what happened with Demi Lovano, Cardi B woke up one morning to discover that Cardi B is over party was trending on Twitter, with the claim being that she too had faked an Instagram account. The accusation was that Cardi B was using the Finsta to throw shade at other entertainers in the industry. This apparent fake account had been used to bash the likes of Ariana Grande, Lil Kim, Meg Thee Stallion, and Doja Cat, all of which have very dedicated fan bases that were quick to cancel Cardi when they believed that she was behind it all. Although Cardi relented that the whole thing was just dumb, and in a statement about the cancel, cancellation rumor, she said, Let me make this clear, I am not a 15 year old girl that does fake Instagrams that talk about celebrities. I have a whole life, a whole kid. I hope you have a whole kid. Just to f***ing feed my kid, it takes me about 35 minutes, an hour to bathe her and do her hair, then I gotta do my own f***ing thing. I don't got time to do that <laughs> A lot of bleeping in there. Apparently she didn't do it. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Amber Heard. This was perhaps one of the biggest cancel culture moments of the year thus far. The war between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard has gone on for many years, but for the majority of the time, Depp was always painted as the bad guy. When Heard was exposed as a domestic abuser in his $50 million lawsuit, we got to hear all the insane things that she had done to him. A change.org page was started as well that wanted her removed from Aquaman 2, and with over 480,000 signatures, they are almost at their goal. If she does indeed get removed from the project, it's safe to say that this will go down in history as one of the biggest wins for the cancel culture mob. In number 10, Lana Del Rey. The beginning of the end for Lana Del Rey started with a letter that was a question for the culture. At the start of the letter she posted, Lana said, Now that Doja Cat, Ariana, Camilla, Cardi B, Kalani, and Nicki Minaj, and Beyonce have had number one songs about being sexy, wearing no clothes, f cheating, etc. Can I please go back to singing about being embodied, feeling beautiful by being in love, even if the relationship is not perfect, or dancing for money or whatever I want, without being crucified or saying that I'm glamorizing abuse. This letter came after she was criticized for being anti-feminist and glamorizing abuse in her most recent album. However, this letter led to her being cancelled by the general public on Twitter because the majority of the artists that she mentioned were of color. Which is why we saw the very punny hashtag, if you will, of Lana Del Racist starting to trend on Twitter. She did clarify later on that that post was not meant to be racist and that she loves all of those artists, but the haters just weren't having any of it. In at number 9, Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star's cosmetics company has brought in hundreds of millions of dollars and according to Forbes, he is now one of the most powerful figures in the industry. Star first rose to fame when his makeup vlogs on YouTube became very popular. From there, he went on to launch his own cosmetics line, but before that though, he was a modestly successful MySpace musician for a brief period of time. However, now that he is intertwined with all of the drama happening in the beauty community, he's being bombarded with hatred. Well, rightfully so. Cameron Lester called him and Shane Dawson out for using him as their token black friend for videos, and from there it just got worse. Shane and Jeffrey's troublesome friendship really came about when Shane wanted to document Star in what would be called the beautiful world of Jeffrey Star. Following Cameron's video, Jeffrey left him a voicemail and denied his allegations against him. The voicemail was leaked to drama channels and contributed to the negative way that would soon erupt after Shane acknowledged the rumors about his role in the feud between Charles Westbrook and Star. In number eight, Leah Michelle. Something that adds to the pressure of filming is who you have to work with. If you're working in a toxic environment day after day and the person bullying you is the star, this can have some nasty outcomes. Leah Michelle, for example, has been accused by several people for being an absolute nightmare to work with. Her co-star Matthew Morrison appeared via Zoom on FUBAR Radio's Access All Areas and was asked about Leah's bullying and he seemed to get visibly uncomfortable. He immediately attempted to downplay the accusations and shift topics by saying that bigger issues are going on in the world right now. Which 
He's not wrong. But this is also something that we need to discuss. Here's a prime example of why the cast has had such a terrible time following the show. I think that whatever went on behind the scenes was kept hit very hidden from the public. They play these cheerful high school kids, but in reality they were all just adults with demons. Now with Matt not acknowledging the accusation made against Leah and covering for her, it only discredits what these people have said about the former Glee star. In at number 7, Brian Adams. It's safe to say that Brian Adams will always remember the summer of COVID-19. I hope someone gets that joke. The 60 year old Canadian singer stirred a ton of controversy after having to cancel a three night stint of shows in London. In the tweet he said, Tonight was supposed to be the beginning of a tendency of gigs at the Royal Albert Hall, but thanks to some bat eating, wet mark, animal selling, virus making greedy bastards, the whole world is now on hold. Okay. Now regardless of where the coronavirus came from, it's tweets like this that are causing a violent energy, if you will, towards Asian Americans. Oddly enough, Adams got more annoying when he tried to spin this tweet into an advocacy for a vegan diet. This really upset a lot of people, and rightfully so, and one user even commented, did not have Brian Adams tweets racist bullshit as a 2020 moment, but here it is, right before our very eyes. In at number 6, Vanessa Hudgens. Vanessa Hudgens has had some major issues with her fans after departing from her once innocent Disney image. Her fans loved her in High School Musical, but when she started doing films like Spring Breakers, it seemed like she was trying too hard to break that image. When the lockdown started happening, she got herself into even more trouble while doing some Instagram live streams with her fans. Her fans were asking how she felt about the quarantine, and Hudgens said, Even if everybody gets it, like, yeah, people are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, inevitable? At that point in time, no one really had any idea when these lockdowns would be lifted. You could clearly tell that she was annoyed by the inconvenience of needing to lock down to protect the sick and vulnerable. It's like, oh, sorry, Vanessa. But th this kind of selfish behavior was frowned upon by many, believe it or not, including whatever fans that she had left. She did try to salvage her career by tweeting this reply that said, Hey guys, I'm so sorry for the way I have offended anyone and everyone who has seen the clip from my Instagram live yesterday. I realized my words were insensitive and not at all appropriate for the situation our country and the world are in right now. This has been a huge wake up call about the significance my words have now more than ever. I'm sending safe wishes to everyone to stay safe and healthy during this crazy time. No mention of the, it's like inevitable that everyone will die. That, that's my impression of Vanessa Hudgens drunk on her Instagram live feed. In at number 5, Jenna Marbles. Jenna has been on YouTube for a very long time and after multiple videos of hers blew up, she really began garnering millions of subscribers. 20 million to be more precise. Although in a video titled A Message, Jenna addressed the controversy of her older content. She apologized for the video that she made impersonating Nicki Minaj in 2011 where she donned blackface and went on to say, My intention to do blackface. I do want to tell you how unbelievably sorry I am if I ever offended you by posting this video. In response to the outcry on the internet to have her cancel, Jenna archived the old videos and announced that she would be stepping away from the channel. She said that she doesn't know if it's forever, but she wants to make sure that the things she puts out into the world aren't hurting anyone. In at number 4, Shane Dawson. After what happened to George Floyd, America went into civil unrest and the people demanded answers from law enforcement. Along with that, however, comes the necessary task of curating our culture to get rid of the problematic people who only add fuel to that fire. Get rid of sounds awful, but what I mean is hold them responsible so that we can admit our mistakes and move forward as a society. The weirdest part about Shane Dawson doing blackface is that he's done it on more than one occasion, and done so in a time where we thought that people would be more tolerant. Even weirder is that when he apologized for taking his sketches too far with blackface, a bunch of his white fans were like, oh, we forgive you. Uh, sorry to say this, but that apology wasn't meant for you. It's meant for the people that he was mocking, and I don't think letting this one slide is a wise idea. There have been so many red flags with Shane Dawson, but this one should have been the final straw. However, it wasn't, so he continued on as if nothing happened. In at number 3, Jimmy Fallon. Tonight Show host Jimmy Fallon apologized for doing an impersonation of fellow comic Chris Rock while in blackface during a 2000 episode of Saturday Night Live. Discussions of Jimmy's 20 year old skit surfaced after a video of it was posted online. According to entertainment trade media outlet Variety, it was first posted on Twitter by a user named Chef Boy O. <laughs> Chef Boy O Deer, if you believe that's his name. Great name. And he showed Fallon as Chris Rock appearing on a talk show. When the clip began to go viral, many people called for Fallon to be fired from The Tonight Show altogether. Although instead, he just issued a lengthy apology. Fallon tweeted, in 2000, while on SNL, I made a terrible decision to do an impersonation of Chris Rock while in blackface. There is no excuse for this. I am very sorry for making this unquestionably offensive decision, and thank you all for holding me accountable. In at number two, Ellen DeGeneres. When Kevin Porter tweeted out, 
Right now, we all need a little kindness. You know, like Ellen DeGeneres always talks about. She's also notoriously one of the meanest people alive. Respond to this with the most insane stories you've heard about Ellen being mean, and I'll match everyone with $2 to LA Food Bank. And the response was overwhelming. However, for this point, let's just focus in on the ones about the bizarre rules for her staff, because that alone was enough to get her canceled. Benjamin Simon said, a, she has a sensitive nose so everyone must chew gum from a bowl outside of her office before talking to her and if she thinks you smell that day, you have to go home and shower. You have to go home and shower. Who does that? What a weird power move. You smell, so stop doing work for me, go home, shower, and then come back and stay late. Chelsea Babcock said, when I was working on At Midnight, our stage manager told us to never work for Ellen. He told us she has signs up in her office that say, do not look the host in the eye. I'm sorry, but that's far from normal. Don't, don't look her in the eye. What, what bizarre rules to have. How is she still tweeting, you know? Is she tweeting? I don't know. I feel like she's hiding in the cave somewhere at this point. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Kylie Jenner. Following the release of Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion's very explicit new track, fans were taken by surprise with a cameo by Kylie Jenner. Many were waiting for her to start singing or something, but other people were fuming with anger for many other reasons. Beyond fears of Kylie busting out a verse on the track, many were calling her a culture vulture. Several memes were throwing shade at the appearance of Kylie and suggested that it was just another example of a white woman pulling the focus away from a black collaboration. That being said, you can't blame Cardi B for wanting to absolutely blow this song up with publicity and she did just that. Having this many stars in your video is bound to have it shared a bunch of times, especially if there is even an ounce of controversy in any one of them. So far, a petition on change.org to cancel Kylie and have her removed from the song is at 67,000 signatures. A lot of mad people. Big mad. He mad, they mad. In at number 10, Liza Koshy. After a video of her using a mock Asian accent resurfaced, YouTuber Liza Koshy took to Instagram to apologize. Another clip included footage of Koshy pretending to speak Japanese. Her last video though is one simply titled, I am so sorry, and the video is simply a recording of her apology letter as the cursor blinks on the final words. In the letter she writes, what I once thought of as innocent jokes were actually tainted with implicit bias and what might have been intended as playful was actually to some incredibly painful. And for that, I am sorry. One of the these videos in question was originally posted back in 2016 and includes Koshi putting on an Asian accent while tasting candy from Japan and Hawaii. Although she wasn't alone for this one, in that video was her fellow YouTuber and at the time boyfriend David Dobrik. In at number 9, Jake Paul. Whether or not you've ever enjoyed Jake Paul's content, he, I mean he certainly has built an impressive fan base over the years simply by acting like a maniac. He's garnered over 20 million subscribers on YouTube, most of which truly enjoyed the content that he's posted over the years. Jake already had some people beginning to hate him when he tried to sell a gambling service called Mystery Box to his young fans. But the straw that broke the camel's back came when he decided to do some filming in Arizona. During the riots that took place in multiple areas around the city, Jake found himself on camera being handled a bottle of vodka that was stolen from a P.F. Chang's. Following that, he was arrested for unlawful assembly and trespassing after multiple eyewitness accounts notified the police. Then on top of that arrest, his house was raided by the FBI in connection to the Arizona looting and they uncovered a ton of weapons. In fact, one of them was just sitting next to his hot tub. Not sure why you'd need that so close. If you're in the hot tub, they're gonna get you. In number 8, Victoria Fuller. Victoria Fuller is probably best known for appearing as a contestant on season 24 of The Bachelor. On the side though, Victoria had dabbled with some modeling, but this gig in particular that she took was probably one of the dumbest things that she could have ever done. The campaign was called White Lives Matter and was meant to raise awareness for white marlins because they were classified as endangered species. Although when I looked into it, they weren't actually endangered. Even the merch itself was just beyond tone deaf and one of the shirts actually had a modified confederate flag on the back which just added more fuel to the fire. As a result, Cosmopolitan Magazine decided to cancel her photo shoot. Lauren Zima posted the photos and shared the story saying, sharing this, Cosmopolitan has decided not to digitally share and publish Peter and Victoria F's winning group date photos in tonight's Bachelor episode after photos surfaced of Victoria F apparently posing in White Lives Matter clothing. Not apparently, she was. In number 7, Sherry Pie. For RuPaul's Drag Race Season 12, they were burdened by a very strong accusation against one of their performers. Contestant Sherry Pie was axed from the show after he allegedly tried to groom and catfish five men. He had pretended to be a casting director and asked each of the men to send in videos of them doing very degrading things. Although upon the victims doing further research into this supposed casting director, they discovered that it was all just fake. The issue with taking Joey who plays Sherry Pie off the show though, was that Sherry had won most of the competitions already, so he couldn't just be easily edited out. Sherry Pie has apologized and admitted that his behavior was terribly embarrassing. Regardless, he was disqualified from the show and the producers did their very best to remove most of his images, giving him very minimal screen time. In number 6, 
JK Rowling. The author of Harry Potter will go down as having some of the most savage tweets out there. I mean, she has a strong passion for shutting down trolls. In reply to someone mocking her, well, JK Rowling said, I'd type a longer retort, but these diamond buttons really hurt my fingers. Although sometimes you can take things a little too far. In response again to a hater who said, glad I caught this article on Yahoo, I will now burn your books and movies too. JK Rowling replied with, well, the fumes from the DVDs might be toxic and I've still got your money, so by all means, borrow my lighter. That is an insane thing to say to someone that is just criticizing your work. And just ignore them. If anything, you're JK Rowling. You're loaded. And she also just recently made some very transphobic tweets that utterly enraged whatever Harry Potter fans that she had left. In number five, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams is no stranger to stirring up controversy with her daytime talk show appearances. In fact, it's probably the only reason why people actually tune in to watch her show. That being said, Wendy took things way too far when she decided to mock Joaquin Phoenix and the scar on his upper lip. She first told her audience that she finds him oddly attractive, but when he shaves off his mustache, he's got a hairline fracture. Then she goes on to add that it's a cleft palate right before she mocks people with cleft palates. One of those, um, what do you call it? Cleft lip. Yeah. Cleft palate. Yep. He's, he's got yep. this. Yeah. He's got this. Uh -huh. No, I find it to be, I find it to be very attractive. <laughs> Canadian football player Adam Big Hill was one of the many people that criticized Wendy for her remarks on social media. Adam tweeted, Today is Bo's big day. He is getting his lip repaired today in Winnipeg by the fantastic Dr. Ross. Thanks to everyone who has reached out, and in advance, thanks for any of your well wishes for Bo. He is so loved. In response to the backlash, Wendy tweeted in response to Adam's post saying, At Big Hill 44, we're thinking about Bo today as he is in surgery. I want to apologize to the Clef community and in Bo's honor. Our show is donating to Operation Smile and Aimer Clef Palette and encourage our Wendy watchers to learn more and help support the club community. You could have done that before people got mad at you. I really hate when these celebrities do that. They, they make a mistake in something and they're like, okay, I'll just throw money at it and that'll solve the issue. No, it doesn't. You cancel. In number four, Abby Lee Miller. Abby Lee Miller is another celebrity that is no stranger to creating controversies, and she did so many times in the reality TV hit show called Dance Moms. Throughout her time on the show, she has made numerous headlines for repeatedly screaming at her young students in her studio, and has been called out for styling children in costumes that are barely in existence. She was once even sued by a 13-year-old dancer over allegations of emotional abuse. However, after Adriana Smith, mother of season eight star Cameron Smith, alleged that Abby had made racist remarks towards them, she promptly pulled her daughter off the series. Miller denied the claims but then issued an apology saying, I genuinely understand and deeply regret how my words have affected and hurt those around me in the past, particularly those in the black community. To Cameron, Adriana, and anyone else I've hurt, I am truly sorry. Regardless, the Lifetime Network decided to sever ties with Miller as a result of these allegations made against her. In number three, Jessica Mulrooney. CTV announced that they would be removing Jessica's reality show called I Do Redo because her recent conduct conflicted with the broadcaster's commitment to diversity and equality. Influencer Sasha Exeter accused Mulrooney of trying to threaten her livelihood. Recently, Sasha made a post about the importance of speaking out against racism, and it was oddly met with criticism from Jessica. Exeter said that she was not calling Jessica racist, but said that she is very well aware of her wealth and power along with the privilege that she is afforded due to her skin color. Apparently, Jessica took offense to Sasha simply asking her audience to support speaking out against racism. All of those comments have since been deleted, but what will stay up forever is this letter from CTV that said, because recent conduct by one of our show hosts, Jessica Mulrooney, conflicts with our commitment to diversity and equality, CTV has removed I Do Redo from all Bell Media channels and platforms effective immediately. In number two, Chase Stokes. Netflix star Chase Stokes, who played John B in the series called Outer Banks, just recently had to go back through his Twitter and Facebook timeline to delete some older, insensitive tweets. In one of those tweets, Chase said, why do fat people on planes insist on tightening their seatbelt as tight as it can possibly go? If we crash, that's definitely not saving you. He then made several other tweets using the R word to describe bad drivers in Orange County. Now, Chase took a bizarre hill to die on when he tried to explain the these tweets. He apologized for them, but then claimed that his account was hacked back then, and that's why these offensive tweets were still up. If someone hacked your account, tweeted a bunch of weird stuff, you would go and delete that immediately, right? Chase tried to explain himself by tweeting, in regards to me being hacked because that seems to be a subject, I was hacked. I never said hackers deleted my messages, I understood that my past and what I said was hurtful, so I deleted my tweets to start fresh and not let things I said in the past continue to hurt people. So which is it? <laughs> Did you say the offensive stuff and then go make a fresh I'm so confused. So many questions, Chase. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Sheena Shea. If you're a fan of Vanderpump Rules, I implore you to start calling celebrity Sheena Stay at Home. In a series of now deleted tweets, the star said, any of my friends working from home this week should come join me for a Palm Springs quarantine. Hey. Which wasn't a joke because she went on to say, I will continue to live my life in Palm Springs or MRD with my friends and not live it in complete isolation or fear. Simple as that. Call me ignorant, but I'm not going to stop living. She got smacked. 
you guys with people just ripping into her for being so dumb. This is not the time to be going on vacation with your friends. Listen to the World Health Organization when they tell you the importance of staying home. She soon apologized saying, for those who expressed concern or viewed my remarks as insensitive, I had just returned from a work trip and wasn't fully updated on the pandemic. I now understand the severity of our current predicament. Please stay safe and wash your damn hands. I guarantee you that that apology would not have come if she wasn't trying to salvage her reputation, whatever reputation she has. With that though, let's check out some of your comments from the video titled, Top 10 Celebrities Hollywood Won't Hire 2020. Amber Johnson says, The Bacon Overlord rules over his subjects with benevolent and quirky yet delightful humor. Keep on being awesome, Johnny. Wow, that was very eloquent in describing me, Amber. I'm gonna have to add that line to my bio. Or maybe my Wikipedia page. I don't have a Wikipedia page yet, but if you wanna start it. <laughs> You can make up facts about me all day. Kara Smith says, you talk at a regular speed, MFs are just slow. I know people are sick of me featuring comments about the speed at which I talk, but this one was too good not to share. Amanda says, with Vince Vaughn being a Trump supporter, I am sure he will have a hard time finding work in Hollywood. Yeah, people were arguing that he is still acting in things, but that wasn't the point of the video. When we talk about Hollywood not hiring him, I mean, we're not going to see him being pushed by way of big box office films, and that will especially never happen if he's, you know, buddy buddy with Trump. Panda Girl says, there is no way your birth name is Johnny Rogers. That name is way too smooth. <laughs> I'm smooth. I can pull that name off. You're right. It's a pretty smooth name, but it's not. It's not my real name. It's most definitely not my real name. Just a different version of my actual name. My real name is pretty smooth, too. My real name is pretty colonial. <laughs> Carmen A. Trejo says, I agree with some of the people on here shouldn't be on here. Example, Terrence Howard. Going back to what I just said with Vince Vaughn, I think Terrence does deserve to be on that list because like I said, big box office production companies know he's hard to work with. He can do projects on his own or be on a TV show, whatever, but that doesn't make them Hollywood backed. You gotta remember that. With that, let's check out some of your comments from the video titled, Top 10 Celebrities Who Disappeared From Hollywood. Beezer says, Rick Moranis is an icon to me. I respect the man for stepping away from Hollywood to focus on his sons. Yeah, Rick is a class act for that one. I mean, the, the, the stay-at-home dads don't get nearly enough appreciation. That dude was killing it in the movie industry. And he's like, I'm gonna focus on my children. Good move. Bree Moore says, I like how fast you speak. Usually watch vids on 1.5 speed because I cannot stand slow talk, so thanks for your quick words. You're very welcome, Bree. I'm happy to finally find someone in the comment section that actually enjoys when I talk fast. That does not happen. Tap Sweet Top 10 says, Angus quitting the show was crazy. Interesting watching someone grow out of a role. Yeah, that was devastating. I mean, he was so great on that show, but hey, that's life. Andrea Smith says, hey, he talks just fast enough. Took me like three times to read this comment. It's good to know that I'm talking just fast enough. Not too much, not too little. By the way, if I'm talking too fast, there's a little icon in the corner and you can just slow me down. You can just, you don't have to waste energy even typing. Colin Featherson says, Johnny, how do you not hyperventilate? <laughs> oh, that's why I thank the editors at the end of every video because they just cut out all the hyperventilating and me messing up constantly. Much love to them. With that though, let's check out some of your comments from the video titled, Cardi B has joined OnlyFans. Tapsweet Top 10 says, OnlyFans is the naughty version of Patreon. <laughs> this is the most accurate way to describe OnlyFans, unless you also don't know what Patreon is. Then, I don't know how else to, to describe it. It's like Snapchat for money. They're like, what's Snapchat? Ah, uh, God. Jackie says, Joss absolutely older, you look real young. <laughs> Funny enough, I am the older brother in that scenario. I have a young face, but it is deceiving. Time Aimbot says, does Johnny Rogers still do Top 10 Gaming? I haven't been on Top 10 Gaming in a while, but I still love playing video games. Maybe I'll come back and do a quick feature. I don't like doing the creepypasta videos though. <laughs> I can tell you that safely here. Not there. They love them. Alehe Rose says, I think Joss would be the older sibling. Fair assumption, but just know that you are not correct. Anime Weird says, be nice to your big sister, Johnny. <laughs> fine. I'm fine. Joss is the older one. I'm sure she'll love that. Okay. I see what I'm doing there. <clears throat> and I had a burp. Sorry. Why would you suggest a movement created to advocate for the pro- Why would you suggest that a movement created to- God damn it. Back when he released his album titled Jesus is King, Jesus. Back when he released his album titled Jesus is King, Kanye would. Let's try it again. Quiet burp. Plus, before I get started, I must warn you that some of these celebrities pass. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. different. I, this is what happens when you copy and paste intros. Mm. This really upset it. Upsetted. That's not a word. 
Getting rid of sounds awful, I get that, but what I mean is hold them responsible so that we can admit our mistakes and move forward as a as a All right, let's do that sentence again. After multiple I wins after multiple Y, wow. I now understand the severity of our current prick 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 I haven't been on top of them gaming.